Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm gonna show you guys how I made my most popular song to date called This Place Unknown. I think it has like over 3 million plays now on Spotify, so I'm gonna go through it and show you guys how it's made. If you haven't heard it yet, I'll play a quick preview right now. How do we get home from this place unknown? The sky's like rain on me, white eyes, tears of pain Anywhere alone, anywhere alone Losing energy, trusting nobody How do we get home from this place unknown? Alright, I'm gonna start at the beginning of the song and just work my way through it. So, let's start with the break plucks. So these plucks are actually a Nexus preset layered with a piano. So it's a Nexus preset called Clicky Signs, and I have some delay on there. And then I have it layered with a contact piano underneath it. And then on those plucks I have just some EQ cutting out the lows, um, some OTT, and a transient designer. And the transient designer just brings out the attack of the sound even more. And in between a lot of those plucks, I bounce the plucks and added reverb and then reverse that so it adds a more interesting element to the break. Looking for a place to run Waiting for the mist to fade Place The sky's my rain on me those chords basically continue for the whole break and then there's a big switch up during the build up to a new rhythm and chords and everything. So I'll go ahead and play that. This place unknown. Alright, so it's the same instruments in the drop as the build up, so I'm gonna go through each one one by one and show what they are. So here's all the synths and stuff by themselves. So first up, we have this M1 piano. It's the M1 house piano. And that's giving the drop most of its character. So on that M1 house piano, I have some EQ, I've got some OTT, and I've also got a transient designer to bring out the attack more. So layered with that piano, I have some saw plucks and some other layers. So this next layer really helps to give body to that original piano layer. And how I made that was a basic CJW wave, a basic MG wave. The first one has four voices in unison, the second one has seven. Then I have this envelope here that's pretty plucky, and that's modulating the cutoff of the filter. So then in the effects section, I just have a little bit of chorus and some EQing going on. Then for processing on that, I just have some EQ, OTT, and another transient designer to bring out the attack. Then beneath that, I have another serum layer that I made that sounds like this. And this is to fill out the stereo space of those chords. So I have two square waves here and um, I'm using the FM from B function on the oscillator A. They both have seven voices in unison. I'm using this envelope here to modulate the cutoff of the filter. Then in the effects section, I have some dimension expander, some phaser, some chorus, just things to make it wider and more interesting sounding. And then for processing, I have EQ cutting out all the lows below 700 hertz, some OTT, and what really makes it wide is the sample delay, which makes the audio signal come to one ear faster than the other, 
so it makes it appear like the sound is way wider than it actually is. And the last layer of those chords to add even more attack is this serum layer I made. It's pretty much the same as the first drop synth I showed you, except I made the envelope even more plucky, and I used the pitch trick where you map envelope 3 to the master tuner. So how you do that is go to source, envelope 3, then global, master tune, and make sure the arrow is pointed one way, and then you control the pitch with this envelope. And I knew I wanted these drop synths to have a ton of attack, so I just added that extra layer to give them even more attack. So now I'll show all these lead layers together. There's a lot of layers, so I'm just going to go through them quickly. First layer is a contact layer. It's a the brass ensemble preset with staccato mode checked. Second layer is that same thing, brass ensemble preset, except it's an octave higher. Then I have another horn sound, this time it's coming from Nexus, and it sounds like this. And that layer is really just filling up the very high end of the spectrum. Then to make the sound nice and wide, I used this fake trumpet layer I made in the serum. And the way you make it sound like a horn is you use the envelope to modulate the detune of both, both oscillators. That way it mimics kind of what a horn sounds like when you blow on it. Then the other couple layers I have might have been overkill, but I use them to fill out the space anyway. So I've got this layer that's only taking up the very high end of the spectrum. Then I have a steel drum layer that's only taking up the high end of the spectrum too. So then I wanted the attack to sound better on all these leads, so I added an attack layer that sounds like this. So when you add all that together, you end up with this. this place After that, verse 2 isn't that much different than verse 1. It's got the same chords, just with some added drums and stuff. And then the other drops are the same, pretty much, as the first drop. One thing I will show you how I made is this like ARP echo effect that I use in a lot of songs. And that's this right here. And how I do that is I take a sound, in this case I used a uh, bell layer from Nexus that sounds like this. And I put echo on it with a long feedback. Then I put OTT behind that echo to make it last even longer. Then I put tremolo on it so it goes back and forth in the stereo spectrum. Then I add some bit crusher on it. And then finally some chorus on top of that. And with all those effects you end up with this. Alright, that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little behind the scenes of how I made this place unknown. It's been doing really well on Spotify and everything, so thank you all for listening. Other than that, go check out my Instagram and my Spotify page below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.